Hi, this is Rachel with Beataholic, and in this video I want to talk about a popular bridal trend you may have seen, and that is bouquet charms. These are charms that dangle from the bride's flower bouquet, or the bouquet of the bridesmaids, and they often feature photos of loved ones, either a relative who isn't able to be at the wedding, or a close family member or friend, or just a meaningful image or phrase um, to who is wearing the charm. They can be adorned with um, smaller charms, beads, crystals, glitter, anything you like. And usually they're tied around the stem of the bouquet with ribbon or cord. So bouquet charms are often used by brides to add an extra element of personalization to their wedding. And they're also great for bridesmaids and they actually make excellent bridesmaids gift, especially if you have a photo that means something to your bridesmaids. So I'm gonna show you how I made this one. Basically, I cut out an image and I glued it into a Nun Design connector. And then I brushed the top of the image with diamond glaze glue and sprinkled some shard glass glitter. And that's actually Judikin's glitter rocks here in silver. And then I attached a small Nun Design heart charm to the bottom using a jump ring and attached another jump ring to the top. And through that one, I threaded a length of ivory silk ribbon. And I used that ribbon to tie a bow around this bouquet. So really it's a classic look with vintage appeal. And I'm gonna show you a couple of ideas for making bridal bouquet charms using different techniques. This is really a project where you can let your mixed media muscle run wild and let your creativity really take the reins. So I'm gonna show you a couple of ideas to make this idea your own. So for the first project I'm gonna show you, we're gonna do a bezel with a phrase. And I cut out the word love here. And this is a transfer sheet. So the first thing you're gonna need is a Nun Design transfer sheet featuring all these words. You can choose a word that means something to you. I cut out love already. Um, you'll also need some vintage patina. I'm gonna use marble white. You'll need some diamond glaze glue, some Nun Design sealant. You'll need a glass dome cabochon and this will sit over the word inside of this antique brass bezel. You'll need some Swarovski crystal pearls this is a pear-shaped pearl, and some head pins to string them on. You'll need a length of silk fairy ribbon. And as for tools, you'll need some flat and round nose pliers and flush cutters. You will need some mixing cups for your patina and to do your transfer sheet. You'll need a paintbrush, some scissors, and some tweezers. All right, so let's get started. The first thing we're gonna do is take a mixing cup and pour out some vintage patina. I like to do this in a mixing cup because it protects your work service because these are permanent inks. So I'm gonna take my bezel and paintbrush and I'm just going to dip the paintbrush in the patina and start painting the inside of the bezel. And I'm not gonna worry too much about this being a very even coat because this piece is gonna have a very vintage flair to it. So we'll see what the patina looks like when it dries. Now that my patina's dry, I'm going to take my Nun Design transfer sheet, the word love, which I already cut out, and I'm going to place it into a cup of lukewarm water for about 30 seconds so the transfer sheet separates from the backing paper. All right, my transfer sheet's about ready to come out, so I'm gonna take tweezers and carefully get it out of the water. And the transfer sheet just slides right off of that backing. I'm just gonna shake the extra water off of it discard the backing paper, and I'm going to place it as centered as I can get it into my bezel. I think that looks pretty good. Very carefully tap it down. Okay, I think that is pretty much in the center of the bezel. So the next step is I'm going to take my Nun Design sealant and paint a very thin coat of sealant over the transfer sheet to prevent any air bubbles from forming underneath the sheet 
as it dries in place. I'm going to use another dry paintbrush to do this. And I'm just going to paint that sealant all over the inside of the bezel. All right, I think that's good. And I'm going to give this about 15 minutes to dry and then we'll come back and do the next step. Now that this is dry, I'm going to apply my glass dome cabochon. And the first thing I want to do is, since this is clear glass, I just want to gently rub it on a surface and make sure there are no fingerprints on the bottom because those fingerprints may show up against your design. So once you get the fingerprints off, take your diamond glaze glue and I'm going to flip over the cabochon and just squeeze a little bit of glue onto the back of the cabochon. And it's a very thin, runny glue, so it will spread out. Add a little bit more. And I'm just going to kind of let it spread out on its own a little bit across the back of the cabochon. There are a couple of air bubbles, but those will get squeezed out once we place it into the bezel. All right, so now I'm going to flip it over and place that cabochon into the bezel and just press down. And you can see those air bubbles just squeeze their way out the sides. It's pretty cute. All right, and I'm actually going to hold it in place for about 30 seconds just to make sure the glue forms a nice tight bond. And I don't want to move it around too much at this point. And if a little bit of glue seeps out the edges around your glass dome cabochon, you can just go in with your nail and scrape that off. Just clean it up and it's all good. So now I'm going to let this dry a while longer and come back and we will finish this bridal charm. Now your glass cabochon is bonded in place. And the cool thing about using glass cabochon is that it's an easy and cost-effective substitute for resin. So it creates that nice clear dome without having to worry about mixing resin. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is add some dangling pearls to the bottom of this bezel piece. And to do that, I'm gonna take a head pin and I'm going to string one Swarovski crystal white pear pearl and I'm going to make some wrapped wire loops on the bottom. So I'm using my flat nose and round nose pliers and I'm making a slightly larger um, loop using my round nose pliers because where I'm going to dangle it is kind of a thick edge down here. So I'm going to slide that onto this area, grab my pliers and just wrap the wire and I'm going to cut off the extra with flush cutters. And now I'm going to do this two more times so I have three pearls dangling from the bottom. Take another antique brass head pin, slide on a crystal pearl, and make a wrapped wire loop directly onto these open areas of this ornate bezel. I always try to be careful about the ends of my head pins going flying across the room when I do this work. That happens more often than I'd like to admit. And I'm just going to neaten up this wire tail down here. All right, that's
that's two. One more head pin, string one more, crystal pearl. And I'll wrap it onto the bottom of the bezel. And this is going to go over here so it's symmetrical. There are lots of different ways to do wrapped wire loops. I'm doing a very casual way here just in the interest of time. Clip off my wire tail. And I'm, again, I'm just going to neaten up a little piece of wire. All right, so now that your crystal pearls are dangling from the bottom of your bezel, we're going to add the ribbon that we're going to use to tie this piece onto the bouquet. So take your length of ribbon, find the two ends, and bend it in half and find the midpoint. And now I'm going to take this midpoint loop and we're going to make a lark's head knot at the top of this bezel piece. So I'm going to take this loop and feed it through this open area at the top. And now I'm going to reach through the loop and grab the ends of the ribbon and just pull them through. And now I'm going to tighten this up. And there you have it. There's a lark's head knot and you can use this, use your ribbon ends to tie the piece around the stem of your bouquet. So this is one finished piece and I'll be right back to show you another idea for a bridal bouquet charm. For our second project, we're going to make a bridal bouquet charm using a personal photo. So for this project, we'll need an antique brass bezel. This is 30 by 40 millimeters. And I've already gone ahead and cut out my photo using scissors. You'll need some scissors. You'll need some diamond glaze glue, some Nun Design sealant. You'll need a paintbrush, a popsicle stick, and a measuring cup. You'll need some E6000 glue, some toothpicks to apply the glue, some ribbon. We have some flat silk ribbon in cream white. You'll need some rhinestone cup chain and some flush cutters to cut your cup chain. And some paper towels, just in case some glue spills, you always wanna be ready to clean it up. So, first of all, as I said, I already cut out my photo, but I first wanna show you just a quick and easy tip for how I went about cutting out this photo in a way that fits nicely into this bezel. So, a little trick that I like to do is to take my photo, this is just a scrap from the picture that I used, and I like to line up my bezel with the area that I want to be featured in the bezel. I'm just picking a random area now to show you. And basically I hold it in place and I just squeeze the picture against the bezel. And I do that all around making sure to squeeze really tightly. And what I'm actually doing is creating an indentation of the shape and size of this bezel in the photo paper. So when I remove it, Hopefully you can see that there is an indentation, maybe you can see on the back. So there's an indentation that is the size and shape of this bezel and I can use that as a guide to follow with my scissors when I cut out this picture. So that helps get a more precise cut when you're cutting out something by hand. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is glue this picture into the bezel. And first of all, we're going to take our diamond glaze and just pour a little bit into the bezel. And I'm just going to use the tip to move that glue around and make sure it gets everywhere I want it to be in the bezel. And it's fine if there are some air bubbles, they'll be squeezed out. And now I'm just going to take my picture and drop it into the bezel and very gently press it into place. You might have a little bit of glue coming out over the top of your image, and if that's the case, that is okay, because we're also going to be 
sealing the image and putting another coat of diamond glaze over it. So we'll let that dry and then we'll proceed with the rest of the image. Next, we're gonna paint a thin layer of Nun Design sealant over the top of the picture. But first, we really want to have our image level. And as you can see, this top of the bezel has a loop here. So that's gonna make it kind of angled downward. So I'm just gonna take a popsicle stick and slide it under the bottom of the bezel. And that will create an even surface. So when you paint your sealant, it doesn't pool at the bottom. Okay, so I'm gonna open up my sealant Take a paintbrush and just very lightly paint a thin layer over this picture and then wait for it to dry. Now the sealant is dry and I just want to point out two things. If the surface looks streaky at all, if you can see marks from your paintbrush, you can go ahead and add a second coat of sealant after the first coat dries. So if you wait about 20 minutes, you can add another coat of sealant. And that's what I ended up doing on this piece. And the second thing I want to point out is that you should make sure your work surface is free of dust. So I had a little bit of dust in my work area and it created a bit of an inclusion in the sealant on the left side. So just make sure you don't have any dust in your area or you can go ahead and cover your piece with a glass or something similar to protect it while it's sealing. So with that, um, I also want to say that you can actually stop here with your piece if you want to. If you're happy with the glossy coat of the sealant, you can just seal your picture and continue with the piece. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and add an, uh, another layer of diamond glaze on top for an added glossy layer. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. I'm actually gonna take a mixing cup and my diamond glaze. And I'm going to pour some diamond glaze into the mixing cup. You can actually just pour your diamond glaze directly onto the image, but this is a good way to create more of a controlled drip, just in case there are bubbles or anything like that. So I'm actually going to take the diamond glaze and a popsicle stick and just drip the diamond glaze onto the surface of the image using a popsicle stick. And you don't need very much just enough to spread out over the surface of the image. And you can kind of use the popsicle stick to push the diamond glaze around and make sure it coats the whole area. And just make sure not to add too much so it goes over the lip of your bezel. And once your piece is fully coated with diamond glaze, diamond glaze actually has a nice indicator for when it's dry because it will dry clear. So just set your piece aside in a dust-free environment if possible and wait for it to dry clear. Now my diamond glaze is dry, it's pretty much clear. And again, I got just a couple of dust inclusions, so I can't stress enough. Make sure to try to keep dust off of your piece as much as possible. But the next thing we're gonna do now is add some cup chain around the perimeter of this bezel. So we're gonna do that by gluing it on with E6000 glue. So I'm just gonna take some E6000 using a toothpick. And I've already pre-cut my length of cup chain to the length I want for this piece. So I'm going to do it bit by bit. I'm just going to take a little bit of glue and I'll start down here and just line the perimeter of the bezel with a little bit of glue. and make sure not to get any glue strands on your image. Now I'm gonna take one end of the cup chain and place it onto the glue. And I'm gonna make sure the crystals are lined up next to each other. I'll take it off of this popsicle stick 
and just really snug those rhinestones up next to each other. I'll add a little bit more glue. And just keep lining this channel around the bezel of the piece. So when you cut your length of cup chain, make sure to keep in mind that you're going to want those crystals sitting right next to each other without any of those brass connector pieces showing between the crystals and cut your piece accordingly. So just keep rubbing the glue around the outside of the piece and carefully setting your cup chain into place and I'll see you back here for the next step once that is done. Now my piece is finished. I finished lining it with cup chain and let the E6000 glue dry. So the last step is putting a ribbon through the top of the pendant. So I have this length of cream white silk ribbon and very simply all I'm going to do is thread it through the top loop of the pendant. And I'm going to slide it down so it's in the middle of the ribbon. And now this piece is ready to be tied onto a bouquet. And the last thing I'm going to show you is just how to do that. So I'll take this one off. As you can see, this was just wrapped around the bouquet. And the cool thing about having a ribbon this long is you can do that really pretty professional looking wrap. So here is the piece I just made. I'm going to cross the ribbon behind the bouquet. and cross it again in front. And just wrap it upward up the stem of the bouquet. So one more cross and back. And at this point I'm going to, well, maybe I'll do one more cross just to get it all the way up the stem. And at this point in front, I'm going to tie my bow. Just a simple bow. And you'll want to neaten this up. <laughs> so this is basically how to tie your bridal bouquet charm onto the bouquet. As I said, they're great for brides, they're great for bridesmaids, and they add a really nice personal touch to the wedding. You can find even more bridal projects and ideas and all of these supplies at bitaholic.com. Thanks so much for watching.